going on everybody peace and infinite blessings it's your girl isis love so i had to switch uh device um <clears throat> so i had to switch device so i'm excited today we're going to be speaking about uh the ancestors and working with the ancestors and uh you know how important it is to really just uh work with our loved ones that have walked you know before us so while we're waiting um whoa while we're waiting for everybody to jump in because everybody's still on an old live video let me get everybody back on peace 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 all right, all right, all right. So we're going to be speaking about ancestor work today. And I'm so excited because I got my mentor. Uh, she's going to be on the call as well, speaking about her experience um, with working with ancestors. So as most of you know, or maybe you don't know, um, I went on a healer's retreat for about nine days, right? And I was like really isolated from you know, the cell phones, um, I really just was really connected with the, with nature and with the ancestors, and so what we're going to speak about today, when I say the ancestors, right, it's nothing spooky, uh, it's really just your grandma, your great grandma, your grandpa, your uncle, you know, the people in your bloodline that have walked before you, right, they walked here before you, and so therefore they have paved the way to your existence, Right. They did a they did a certain number of things to get you in this now moment here. So we want to pay respect for our ancestors. We want to make sure we let them know how grateful we are uh, for their existence. Right. And so if you're just getting in before we get deep in this conversation, I just want you to simply just share this video. You know, and if you're watching this from YouTube, just go ahead and subscribe to this you know channel because I'm going to be coming to you with a lot of you know financial prosperity but in order for you to be prosperous you got to be you got to be prosperous on the spiritual realm right you got to be spiritually rich and we'll make a whole video for that but part of the uh, ways you um you know become spiritually rich is that you connect with your ancestors so um i know i spoke a little bit uh, i think last week about um a movie called coco and uh coco is a kid movie everybody should go out and watch the movie coco right because what it did did is it really hit home letting you know how the people in mexico and the people in central america how they actually honor um you know honor their loved ones that have passed right and so one of the ways that you can start connecting with your ancestors is creating a altar right and so I'm not gonna go too deep on how to create the altar I'm gonna make a whole new video about that but I do want you to know that um, you create an ancestor altar by you know think about it like this so some of you may be familiar with going to church um, and so you know how you're at church. What's going on, Cuzzo? You know, you're at church and you go to the altar to pray, right? So it's the same exact thing, right? You create an altar of your loved ones because it's going to be a portal for them to come and communicate you. You got to think about it. Anything that's done is done in the spiritual realm before it's done in the physical realm. I mean, really think about it. When you want something in your life, what do you begin to do? You begin to think it, right? So it begins in your mind, right? It begins, it, it starts in the, in the spiritual sense. So in order for you to be abundant, and see, when I speak about being abundant, and I speak about being rich, right? It doesn't have to always look in the form of money. I mean, rich in abundance in health. Like, how is your health? Like, how are you feeling? Like, rich and abundant in your relating, in your partnerships, in your connection with your community. Because you may think that you can do this world by yourself, right? But in all actually, we need each other. And so, 
when you start to create a altar for your ancestors, you are creating a portal place for them to come and communicate with you. You have to understand, remember, this is a spiritual thing we're working on. So if we're working with our ancestors, our grandmas that was here before us, they're helping us on the spiritual realm. You're tapping into a whole nother state of abundance, right? And so a lot of us, we feel kind of lost, you know, uh, we feel like a disconnect. We may not know where we're supposed to be going right now in life, right? And it's because we're not doing the inner work, right? We have to really get deep and down and dirty inside of ourselves, right? We have to reach the points in our body that we don't even want to think about. The shame, the guilt, the wary. The pain from something that happened two years ago, three years ago. What's going on, Noble? I'm going to bring you up in just a second. Um, the pain, the worry that you got from, you know, um, let me go ahead and bring Noble on here real quick. Um, you know, all of that gets stuck in your body. And all of it, you're also <laughs> of, of, uh, tragic to happen in our communities for us to start making movement like we are energy it's time for us to be in strategic momentum planning and strategicness and strategies and there's too much knowledge on the um internet and everything about everything that's happening and it's like we we have to understand exactly what this is we we are connected to paradigms we need to let go of so it's not about where we should be it's right now is where what we should cleanse collectively so collectively we gotta like real talk that's what my whole niggas and bitches movement is collectively we must stop participating in the paradigm associated with niggas and bitches we know what that is first we must get the word out of our mouth and so wait a minute so so the whole contract the whole idea of a nigger and a bitch is a feeling. 
You know, just like you say, I know a nigga when I see a nigga. Absolutely. If it walks like a duck, you call it a duck, right? So absolutely. But when you see that activity, when you see that energy, we must, well, I'm talking about um, everything that we think of when we say that word nigga. Everything we think of when we say that name bitch. Every idolization, every stereotype, every feeling, every energy, every person, everything we've ever put on those energies. We must identify it, understand, make aware of it. Uh, I feel like calling you a bitch. <laughs> um, I feel like calling you a nigga. We gotta stop there. Um, let me let me understand this feeling. Let me understand this. Because it's not that you acting like a nigga or a bitch. You know? Okay, you are acting like a nigga or a bitch. However, <laughs> I gotta understand this feeling, not to curse you out, but to understand the feeling so that I can get a hold of the feeling. Like, real talk, we gotta get off the paranoia. We gotta pay attention like that. Mm, I want to call, not, oh, I want to call you this word. It's like really do a detox, deliberate detox diet of that whole paradigm. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. I don't Absolutely. That's what it is. But if I call you a victim, you're like, uh-uh. But it's like we put a positive content on it thinking that we could clean it up. You can't clean up a, a McDonald's burger. You can't. You can't. You can't put real meat on the label and that shit be real. You can't put that, even if you use some part of a dead animal, you can't put cow on there. You can't put all that stuff. You can't do it. We got to call people to the plate on their stuff. Like, no, you can't. So with that narrative... Of, of, of nigga, we have to start there. It's a simple thing. Stop using the word. Be aware of the feeling that you have when that comes up. Why is this important? Because the clearer we get on stuff together collectively, the more our ancestors can use us to, as vessels to communicate to us. We have to keep yeah. We got to detox. We detox our body. We detox all this stuff. We have to detox and, and update our mental. We have to. That takes deliberate work. It takes like going to the gym. No, it's not time for you to say, okay, I'm not going to meditate. It's not even time to debate. It's time to understand. You know that you know that meditation is what makes you aware. Sat down for 15 minutes and just breathe. Set down the whole house. <laughs> it's like just like it's mandatory to get up and go to work every day. We need to meditate in that same vein. <laughs> you don't care, rain, sleet, snow. You broke. You broken. You bleeding. Nothing. Your ass get up and go to work every day. You ain't gonna skip a beat. In that same vein, get up and meditate. That same energy, that same desire, that same want, that same need. Get up and meditate. I don't know how to meditate. Motherfucker, you ain't know how to work this job until you went to fucking training for it. Okay? <laughs> so go to training for it. When you went to work, you had to do a 90-day training before your ass became a permanent employee. Why don't you think it's going to take you 90 days to learn some new shit? You train that way. People want to start some shit and don't do that shit right the first week and be giving up. I ain't doing this shit. This shit hard. Motherfucker, you breathing? I know. Get off the paradigm. And I understand, Noble. Get off the paradigm. Of, you can't say niggas and bitches and motherfucker. I got to get them all, get all the paradigms out. This is true. I'm, I'm working on me. But see, I'm aware. Y'all see that? No joke. I'm aware. That's a paradigm too. Who I am yeah. is not going to be the same I am 12 months today. However, what what we're speaking about here is like we have to have a strategic plan. That's just it. <laughs> so, so how how would you now uh, we get a little bit about 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 the uh, uh, emotions now now uh, 
Absolutely. So, um, we have to understand that there are several parts of us. We have our pain body. We have a memory body. We have uh, a ego body, and we have a spiritual body. And there's more bodies. We have all those things. So we have to bring all of us. Some of us call those different bodies and those different lessons and things different names. Like for example, mine's is like Doodles with my family, Julia you know, Julie, um, a boo in high school, you know, Jules, when I got to Atlanta, Noble, not Noble Jules, then Jules, and Ju Noble JM, like, every name that you have ever named yourself is a different significant part of you. Yeah. So you gotta call yeah. all those parts to each other. That's what the altar is for. It's like calling all, conjuring all of your strength here physically, mentally, emotionally, godly to one place to one focus point having a space and having representations of the characteristics that you want to have in that space it's the control of your eye ear senses it's a space that's designated that you keep sacred mean you keep as clean as possible there's no playing there's not a sense of it's not seriousness it's just intentional intentionalness in the space the space is only for this. And you step into that space more for you to cleanse your, like, okay, I'm in this space. And when I look at this space, I see representations of my ancestors that I honor. I see representations of different deities and characteristics that I honor. I see the things that I love. I see myself. I see my deity. I see everything in this honor. And in that space, that is where you connect and disconnect to connect again. However, what I understand is that space can also be inside of you. You can attach to breath in that same, whatever gives you that feeling. It could be an altar. It can be a closet. It could be a prayer. It could be a song. It could be a beat. It could be, it could be a scream. It could be a yoga stretch. It could be a yawn. It could be a view. It could be whatever. Whatever it is to get you to that space, that is your altar. Mm. <clears throat> Uh, 
Hey, what's going on, family? Okay, cool. So we're back. This is like part three. We're speaking about the ancestor altar, me and Noble Jewels. So thank you, everybody, for, um, you know, still staying on the call, even though we had a little technical difficulty <laughs> trying to set up my phone. So, yeah, let's just wait for everybody to get back on. What's going on? Peace and love, Peter. Shout out to Peter. He's working with the Set Nam, you know, foundation to make sure the children in India have fresh water, schooling, shelter. It's a beautiful thing that he's doing. So, I'm so happy that everybody's hopping back on. If you missed the other two lives, what's going on, Daniqua? If you missed my other... Because this is like part three, right? So, um, if you missed the other two, you know, definitely, um, you know, check them out. But what we were speaking about, me and one of my community members, is we were speaking about, you know, ancestor work, right? And working with your ancestors. And when I mean working with your ancestors, I mean working with those that have, you know, walked here before you, right? So, it could be your grandma, your great-grandma, your grandpa, you know, honoring these people because without them, you know, you wouldn't be here. And so it's so important to pay homage. And so I gave a um, a movie, a movie, a good little like movie that really breaks down ancestor and ancestor work. And it's called Coco. And so it's a kid's movie. You can check it out on Netflix. But I highly recommend that you watch it. And you don't just watch the movie like you watch the movie to really um understand you know what what it means so i'm waiting on noble to get back on here she was also on here you know speaking about the ancestor work because you know ri being rich and, and wealthy comes in uh different you know different ways right but it all starts with your spirit if you're if your if your spirit is like nasty and you know just wrong <laughs> You know, you're going to attract certain situations to you that's not going to be good. But when you start really working with your energy and doing the inner work, like, you know, releasing any shame, releasing any guilt from the past. You know, our body holds on to traumas, things that happened to us when we were a kid, you know, things that happened to us in, in relationships and partnerships, you know, just traumatic things. And so we hold on to that in our bodies. And so one thing you have to think about is if your grandma, your grandpa, your uncles and your aunts had the same like thing that they were holding on to, think about if they didn't process none of that and they just, you know, you know, transition or we will say, you know, died to the next level and they didn't get to process that stuff. That stuff stays into your bloodline. It stays in your DNA. Right. And so it's up to us to eradicate that and to change our DNA and to really see generational wealth is just not about having gold, having land. You know, don't get me wrong. Those tangible things are important, but it's really about having a rich spirit and having a rich spirit on your behalf and not just on your behalf, but a behalf of your grandma and behalf of your great great grandma and behalf of your great 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 grandma. Like if they wouldn't have met certain people and did certain things, like, you wouldn't even be here. I mean, really think about it. You would not have been here. Even to your parents, without them meeting up, you would not be here. And so, we, when we start getting really in contact with um, people who are, because they're not gone. They're still there right? It's just that they're on a different type of frequency, and we have tuned out so much on the spiritual um, sense because we're always working, right? Or we're always, um, we got to run here, we got to run there. So, oh, my camera flipped around. <laughs> and so we get desensitized. Like, that's one thing I learned uh, as I was traveling and I stayed in the mountains, right? Um, is that I was away from social media. So the, the whole point is creating an ancestor altar. And I'm not going to go deep into what an ancestor altar is right now. I'll make a whole video on that. 
But basically, it's a portal. It's a gateway where you can still communicate with your loved ones, right? Because you have to think about it. Everything is energy. No spooky stuff or anything. Any Everything is energy. Like this cup right here with this tea is energy, right? So everything is connected. Everything is energy. So, whoo, give thanks. The ancestors are definitely around. Give thanks. So when you start to build your ashe up, like when you start to build your prayer up, See, the power is in your words, right? The power is in your words. And so, start to consciously, with intention. <laughs> it's just when I call it. Like, 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 yeah. 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 You said what? It's only when I call it. Like, 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 that, that, that it go like that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. True. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. So it's, it's not until we really start doing the work with the ancestors and getting our prayers up and sending prayers to them so that they can also release. And especially for the women. You know, women, we have a lot of trauma around our womb, right? Whether we had abortions or we just was out there on the streets a lot, you know, certain things damages our wounds and our wounds is our portals. You got to think about it. Like our wound births life. Life comes from our womb. That is a sacred space. Like the baby is in one world and then it passes through you. So your womb is very, very important. So just think about your mother, your mother's mother, your mother's 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 and all of those wombs that didn't get the purge, right? That's all in your DNA. That's still all in your bloodline. And so those type of things need to be purged. So when we speak about doing the work, we're talking about going in side right going inside so um you know now is the time the ancestors are speaking you know it's time for us to get back into our roots and our ritual practices that we used to do and i'm speaking about before christianity was on the scene right because this is something that everybody has to realize is that christianity in this form as it is today is something very new an allegory based off of another <laughs> religion or a culture which came from what we call Africa now, but of course they have many names. So I personally wouldn't say that I'm African because African, the name Africa came from a European guy that came over to Africa, right? So we, I wouldn't per se say we're African. We're everything, right? We can't even be defined, right? We're our non-binary beings, right? And so when we are doing the work with our ancestors, we remember who we are and why we came here, right? We start to remember who we are and why we came here. We start, our ancestors start to work through us, for us, for our bloodline. One thing that you got to realize is, remember, this is spiritual. We in a spiritual war against ourselves, right? Right? We in a spiritual war against ourselves, so this is spiritual. You got to tap this spiritually. And so, the more you connect spiritually with it, you start to do your, what we call in the, um, a refa is your is your or repractice, right? You have to start you have to start going into your inner mind, right? You have to build an altar for yourself. What do I mean by building an altar from yourself? I mean find a little corner. Mine's is in my closet. I put a little box down, right? And then I put a cloth over it and I put an incense, I put some elements, I make it really, really basic. And I sit there and I just meditate and I listen to all those little small thoughts in my mind. You know, I don't react, but I listen to it because those you are you are channeling into the divine, right? That's what is that's what that's when you're in God mode, 
right? You're in God mode when you start doing ancestor work, right? Because you're working with something outside the physical. Everybody else, normal stuff, they're doing everything on a physical level and spiritual, but you're becoming consciously aware of the spiritual work you're doing on this plane. And I really wish that I can get Noble up on here, but every time I get her on here for some reason, uh, I think our energies is just too much. It starts to, um, yeah, the energy is very high. It starts to tune out, you know what I mean? So we got to get back to our African heritages. And I'm just going to say African, lack of a better word for y'all to understand. Or should I even say indigenous practice? And that's with getting connected back to nature. We are naturally nature beings. Nowadays, we don't like to be outside because it's hot. We don't like to go outside because of bugs. We don't like to go outside because of this, because of that. We have lost so much contact with nature. We don't even see that we're suffocating Mother Earth, right? With the plastic that we get, with the cars that we're driving, with the amount of fuel that we use, with the factories in China. I really want you to take the time and type in Trash Island, right? Trash Island island right and just look at all of the plastic so think about when you go into the store next time and you buy a plastic bag you get something you put it in the plastic bag and then you throw that plastic bag right? do you know what happens to that plastic bag right it stays and so you just pass it on to your kids and your kids kids and just for them to live in an area where there's nothing but pollution that's how far we have lost contact with Mother Earth, with the mother, with the goddess, with the woman, right? And so the ancestors are coming through and they're speaking and they're asking the women to wake up to the divine priesthood, right? And really start doing the work, you know? It's beyond meditation, right? Meditation is the key and it is a key factor in it, we definitely need to meditate and clear our minds, right? But the truth of the matter is we got to get down in that gunk. We got to get down to 12-year-old you. We got to get down to 5-year-old you. We got to get down to 8-year-old you. And we got to go back to that trauma point, that pain point. And we got to go back and we got to tell that little 5-year-old you, that little 9-year-old you, that, you know, you're loved. And you're trusted. And I love you. And whatever has happened to you has made you a stronger person now. I love you. I trust you. I forgive you. You got to reach inside of there because some of us are still holding on to past stuff that we came in and progressed to the next level because we still tripping on some relationship that we was in or something that happened when we was a child. And so the moment that we let go and let God and remember that we're infinite and we come down here to experience things to be able to elevate, right? And so you have some ancestors that are quote unquote not so elevated, meaning that their light is not that bright. Just like some people, light is not that bright. Just like some people on this live is going to enter and overstand me. And some people are just going to scratch the surface of what I'm speaking, right? Because it depends on what frequency are you picking up on when I'm speaking, you see? So, you know, that's how currency works. But... The more you elevate your ancestors, those ones that went through the pain, those ones that don't want to accept that they have transcended, right? You need to show them love. You need to give them prayer. You need to show them ashe and elevate them because the more you have elevated ancestors, woo! Let me tell you, there's a lot of things in the making that's about to be happening. It is, if you don't know anything about uh, indigenous um, spirituality, I highly recommend that you get into it and really start to learn the truth, right? Don't be so blindsided out of what you think and how you think things are because things are not really how you think it is, right? So really start to get into African spirituality, quote unquote, right? Because it's going to be the right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead you to getting back to the roots.
because it's time, like I said, for the root race to bring balance back onto the planet. And so we got to step up and walk up to our true God selves, right? We got to remember that there's nobody outside of us. There's no outside force. There's no outside God. We're all in everything. We are a part of the all in everything, right? So the moment we remember the God in us, we don't stress about little bills. We don't stress about not having money to pay your IML subscription. We don't stress about not having no gas money. We don't stress about things because we know that we are abundant and abundance is all around us. So, you know, I'm just so happy and grateful right now to follow, like, following the path. Like, I've been fighting this for a, a while. Um, some of you may know me in my beginning journeys. Um, I started off really on the spiritual path. I was making a lot of videos about meditation and eating good and being in nature. And I did, like, uh, crystal singing bowls. Like, I did a lot of things. I make tinctures. I make... You know, jewelry, like I did a lot of things and then I went on to this path of finances because see what I am is a bridge keeper, right? I'm a paradigm shifter. So I'm able to touch both worlds, masculine, feminine, up and down, you know, spiritual and, you know, the 3D dimension. And so by doing that, I am here to merge spirituality and finances together because they're one and the same, right? And so that's why I'm coming up with my Academy Spiritual Fi to let everybody know that the work and being abundant starts with the inner work and starting with your ancestors. So, you know, I'm just so happy and grateful right now to walk this journey of a priestess and um, really usher in um some 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 stuff right so really to really tap into myself like i'm so super excited to go deeper because the power is in the prayer and the more you can continue to pray program your mind program your mind every time you find yourself going down a down spiral anytime you feel yourself stressed out anytime you feel like you like just done with the world Go into your meditation. Go into your mantra. I am beautiful, bold, strong, and happy. I am beautiful, bold, strong, and happy. I am beautiful, bold, and strong, and happy. Just keep repeating something over and over. Okay, family? So, it was a pleasure. Um, I definitely we're going to have to do another um, live video with Noble, a part two. Uh, maybe she might have to do it for her live. But <clears throat> I'm so grateful that we were able to speak a little bit and she was uh, able to spit her Gospels. And um, I'm just I'm just so happy and grateful right now. I mean, like, life is amazing. Like, you got to really just take a look at the abundance around you. Even when things are not so quote-unquote good, it's always good, right? So it has been a pleasure. Hey, look, family, what I want you to do before I go, make sure you share this video. Tag some people that you know really need to hear this information and make sure you go to my Facebook page Isis love and hit the follow button by you hitting the follow button You're able to always know when I come live and you definitely don't want to miss my lives if you're watching this on YouTube Yes, I have a YouTube channel. It's called Isis love uh, Please make sure that you subscribe and uh, comment on this video. I'm gonna be uploading a YouTube video out here soon so check out my YouTube channel. Um, I'm also going to be putting my website in the comment bar. If you're interested in any type of mentorship, any type of coaching, um, if you're uh, interested in, you know, multiple streams of income, <laughs> um, definitely uh, contact me. Um, you know, financial freedom is our birthright. It's our birthright to live a lavish, abundant life. Like, I make sure I definitely live a lavish, abundant life in whatever I do, right? So, it's been a pleasure, family. Peace, love, infinite blessings. Check out the replay if you missed it. Gang, gang. Peace. See the description of this video for links to Trade Nation University and Trade Nation Global where you can learn how to become a skilled forex trader, successfully earning profits and creating generational wealth. Don't forget to share and like this video. Also remember to subscribe to the channel to get notifications on my new videos.
Peace, love, and prosperity, family.